Hey everybody, Greg here from The Joy of Aquascaping and I wanted to do a little bit of a video for you because I recently had to do a bit of a, a surgery on one of my fish, Krang. He's this amazing red caparanda. If you haven't seen him, you need to check out my Instagram because he features there loads. He's awesome. He's full of personality, but unfortunately his wen had grown so massive and it was covering his eyes that he couldn't see, he couldn't get food. And you know, fish can survive without its sight, no problem. Goldfish in particular can, can actually survive quite well without sight. But the problem was that he was actually starting to go upside down and his head was kind of um, dropping to the bottom. And then um, the reason for this was because his wen was getting quite big, he wasn't getting enough food and his back end was kind of starting to get a little bit lighter. He was after losing quite a bit of muscle mass. So he needed to be able to see and go in and get food. Now, when surgery is not a particularly complicated surgery, but it's not something that I'd recommend everybody attempts in all cases. This is particularly because of the fact that you can lose fish when you're doing when surgery, they can die. And you know, a fish is generally better off blind than it is dead, same as everything else. So look, it's not something I'd recommend for everybody, but in this particular case, I didn't feel that bringing Krang in and putting them in a tank was the most suitable thing for him because I felt he was really stressed out when he was getting when there was food anywhere near him. He was freaking out. He just needed to try and find it. He's a bit of a hungry devil. And it just wasn't working. It wasn't working for him and he, he hadn't got the quality of life that he had previous. So um I decided it was time for me to do surgery. Now with the surgery um it's really important that you know you do as much research as you can in advance of doing it. This is not an all-encompassing guide and you'll see from the video the footage isn't super because it's not what I was concentrating on you know there's videos where you want to make things look cool for YouTube there's videos that are an interesting aside when you're doing something really important and for me the safety of my fish was first and foremost so I, I got it you know I put the camera there and everything before I got set up so that I could do a little bit of recording and show you guys the process for anybody who does is interested in it because they feel they need to or wants to learn more about it and um, but the footage isn't is, is secondary it's it should be secondary in this situation you never do a surgery on your fish for the sake of, of footage that that's criminal just don't do that it's not good so with krang i decided um that it was time to do the surgery after he started getting really stressed out and i knew things weren't right now the the wen had completely covered over his eye he went from having visibility to having zero visibility in his eye over the course of a week his wen has grown so incredibly big and um, quite heavy that I think it, it's probably going to give him more issues in the future because I didn't take tons off. But what I do is I'm going to show you the video and talk over it and give you an update as to kind of what I'm doing along the way. So you can just learn a little bit about what I'm doing and the processes involved, the materials I'm using and why I'm using and doing what I'm doing. It's a relatively quick process and one thing that I'd like to say beforehand is when you're when you're doing it um it doesn't maybe feel as kind of graphic as it does when you're watching it it's the sort of thing that when you're watching it, it looks around this and you're looking at it going oh my god get water into that fish why is he out of the water so long as long as you keep his gills wet he will still be able to breed so it's really it, you can't let it go dry you don't let the fish go dry you don't let his gills go dry and that's why i use a turkey baster every now and again just to put water in and remember when he's sedated he's actually going to be using less oxygen and he's going to be much in a much more chilled out state but there is a limit to how far you want to sedate your fish because they will die if you sedate them too much and i'm i'm not a vet you know i'm not qualified in this it's just something that i have experience in and this time i wanted to share so when i put him into um into an anesthetized state what i'm looking to do is i'm looking to kind of not knock him out but have him on the cusp of it because I don't have the drugs required to induce him out of the coma and get him back going again if he goes too far. And if he goes too far, that's it. They're gone. So for me, it's about keeping a light sedation, but also enough that it's not going to cause him any pain. Now, before we go into it, I, I, you know what? I've got to discuss really briefly what when is, because why would you even need to do when surgery? Why is it grown on the fish's head? It's like a kind of a tick fatty tissue that grows on top of your fish's head and it can grow around their face it can grow on their head and um, it can grow around their eyes it can cover over the, it can grow over their gills and cause trouble but it generally grows around the head gills underneath the head underneath the chin 
and it's where they get fat. It's where goldfish put fat on their bodies. And sometimes it can look absolutely awesome. It looks fantastic. It's something that we strive for. And we bred into fish. It's something that occurs naturally on fish. Sometimes fish will just get a little bit of a lump. We like everything else, all the other traits that we have with goldfish. We've selectively bred them to have awesome wins. And um, crank really does have an awesome win. But it's a, it's a fatty tissue. It's kind of hard. It's kind of, it looks like jelly and it feels like jelly to touch the outside. When you're cutting into it, it's actually kind of, it's thick. It doesn't cut super easily. You wouldn't want to be doing it with a blunt instrument. You have to be using something really sharp. Now, it doesn't really bleed because it's, it has a really low vascular density. So that means that there's very little by way of veins in it. It's not really being supplied that much with blood flow. Now, every now and again, you'll see it on a goldfish, there'll be like a white spurt, like a little explosion out of it, where um, some where it's getting new wen growth, and there's a little bit comes through, and sometimes you might actually see a little tiny bit of red blood around it. I know my panda around had that during the week there, as she was getting some new uh, wen growth on her head. And you know, it looks, oh, it looks a little bit dodgy, but it, it's fine. It's normally absolutely no problem. And um, the bit that kind of, the white stuff that looks like it's hanging out on the side of the head, that usually goes quite quickly. It is easy um, when you're not used to it to kind of get it confused with maybe external parasites and things like that or, or white spot, but it, it's, it's, it, there are differences, so it will look a little bit different. But look, the when, it's just a fatty tissue. It doesn't hurt them. It actually has a very low... Um, nerve density as well and so it, they don't they don't really feel it so much like crying you could literally pet the top of his head and he'll be like what's going on what is that and he won't even notice at first so um not that i recommend petting your goldfish slime coat needs to stay really important and uh, we could talk about that in another video but um he doesn't really notice at first so there are points in the video where it looks like as if he's flat he's flapping he's flapping because he can see what's going on as opposed to really feeling what's going on Apart from being sedated, he'd have a low nerve density in his wen anyway. So even though I'm cutting around his eye here and above his eye, he doesn't actually feel it. So don't worry about that. He's not in pain. He's not suffering for being out of the water. But like that, I, I paid very careful attention to the amount of sedation I was given. And also to the, you know, to the, to the amount of water that I was getting into it and making sure that he was kept with water going into his gills. Now, it is useful to have a second pair of hands in this situation because you can keep water going into them. But you have to be careful because if you overdo it with the water that's going into their gills, you can actually start to remove and pull the sedation out of their gills and actually pull them out of the state that they're in, that, that anesthetized state. But also, if you keep on using water with the anesthetic in it, you're gonna put them further into sedation. So there's a fine line that you have to work with. So you're not looking to do it too quickly that it's gonna end up, that you're not gonna end up doing it right, but you do need to do it quickly enough that you are going to get what you need done without the sedation wearing off and also without having to go back into And look, if the fish starts becoming light in its sedation or the anesthetized state that it's in starts to kind of become lessened and they start to react a little bit more, you can put them back into the solution with the anesthetic in it. In this case, I'm using clove oil mixed with water um, and I'll go into that in the video, but you can put them back in, get them under a little bit and go again. But you don't want to do it too often for too long and get them, you know, get them to a point where they've been knocked out for ages. But look, the recovery is generally quite quick. And like that, without further ado, I'm going to go into the video and I'll talk a little bit about, about the process as I work, work my way through it. And you'll be able to see what happens as we're going along. So there he is at the back, which is pretty much where he's been hanging out the whole time now. Um, Every, I think he's using up a bit of energy trying to keep himself right and he's just looking not himself at all so struggling to eat and he's gone skinny on his back end there just before the base of his tail so that's gone skinny his head is getting bigger and he's just completely imbalanced so I think this is going to provide him with a much better quality of life so let's get him out and get him ready Okay, so this morning's the morning. Krang is gonna have his wen cut, and this is the little setup I just wanted to go through it, which is so I have some pre moistened towel that's moistened with some water from the pond, and I just have it on an upside down lid here off of a storage container just to contain some of the water if there's spillover. A uh, turkey baster, I'll be using that to put some water around his gills. And um, I have my scissors here ready to go in alcohol, 
and I have some sterile scalpels. I've got my gloves. I have some more 100% pure alcohol. This is the clove oil mix. You have to mix that up really well because oil and water don't mix very well. And this is the clove oil that I'm using. Focus. Um, so that is mixed up in there, ready to go. I have um, a little spray bottle here with some water from the pond as well that I can use to keep everything nice and moist. I have a bucket here ready to go and I just knocked this off for a second, but have some aeration going on here. Battery powered aerator, um, because we don't want to be messing around with electricity and water. And I am basically ready to go. I've got, I'm gonna go get Krang. I'm gonna get it set up. I have um, a small bucket here that I was using to feed them. I've sterilized all this stuff with boiling water and I'm gonna get that set up here. And I'm just gonna get him ready to go and let's get him knocked out so we can get this wind surgery done. Now, what I've done is I've set him up in this container. Um, there's a bit more than a gallon and I tried with about five drops of clove oil to start off with. Now, in order to make sure you have the clove oil really well mixed because it's an oil, it doesn't want to mix with the water very well. What I done was I put it into a small food container with some of the water from this bucket and I just shook the heart and soul out of it. I mean, I really shook it and I got it to the point where it was completely blended in. It really needs to be dissolved quite well. Now, over the course of about kind of 10, 12 minutes, it wasn't, and I, it was clear it wasn't going to be enough to actually get him out cold. Um, or, well, not out cold because we don't want to bring it to that point, but to get him to the point where he's no longer reactive to pain stimuli. And to do to test that, what I'm doing is I'll push down on the end of his tail with my hand initially, and I can see he's still reacting. So I added another three drops of clove oil, and after a little while, that had a great effect. And what I done was I pushed down really gently with the end of the turkey baster on the base of his tail, and he's not reacting to it at all, which means he can't feel it, which means he's ready to go, and it's time to get him out at that point and into the container or onto the onto the setup that we have for him and get him sorted. So you can see here on this side, there is absolutely no vision. He, ha he has no vision at all. And that's very recent because he did just a couple of, couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago. So it's, help it's really, you know, making him struggle to find food. And his back end here is quite, quite thin. Now I'm gonna get moving and get this cut really quickly. And let me see, the wind is actually, it looks like as if it's nearly starting to grow together. It's not, but that's how it looks. And I can see he is missing some vision. His eye on this side is quite, quite closed over. Now, don't worry about him twitching. He can't feel a thing. My concern here is getting his when cut, protecting his eye. So I'm going to remove some from just above it. so that he has a better bit of vision up above and from in front as well, so that he can go in on his food. Now, turkey base, so we get some fresh water and just rinse it off. Bit in his mouth. Crying. And just make sure we can see what we're doing. And I can see that there is a small bit of blood in here in the corner, right in the corner. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the scalpel. Just try and get through some of this wind growth. As you can see, it's very difficult to get through with the scissors. Now you need to be very careful here of his actual eye. Now I've got through that. That'll just give me some, some more for the scissors to get some traction
least. There's no reason to let them dry out. The fish is not meant to be out of water. But this is just about helping to get him a healthy, happy life. There is some wind growth underneath the eye here, which I would very much like to remove because it is impeding this side very significantly, particularly on this side. I feel if we get this out of here, he will have a huge increase to his quality of life. Be very careful. A very small piece at a time. It's very important that we don't put into his actual eye. There at this part. Fantastic. Really happy about that now. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit more from this side off just so he has some better overall vision. And I'm gonna flip him over really quickly because he is starting to get a little bit live there we don't, we, we don't want them out here for too long and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove this underside here as well This eye definitely seems much healthier because this eye has had more more light getting on it. He has been able to use this one a little bit longer. I most of the way through will come back in with the scissors. Very carefully kind of skirting the edge of his actual eye.
I'm just going to cut some of this one off here. I'm just starting to move a little bit more. I'll cut some more towards the front. And then we'll call it a day, won't we, buddy? And we'll call it a day. What I've done now is I've just transferred Krang into some fresh clean water. And you know, just to help, I'm gonna move him about a little bit in it. Now this is water from the pond. And I just wanna get the fresh water moving over his gills. It'll take him just a moment to come to. And another thing you can do if you want to help him come to as quickly as possible is you can put a bit of water through his mouth. So I'm just going to use the turkey baser in this case. And I can see him, he's breathing away. He has got a little bit more vision in his, on his eye for sure. Just take him a moment or two to start kind of livening up. So I'm going to start doing a bit of a tidy up and I'm going to leave him be for a minute. And we'll just let him come to. Now, at this point, you can see Krang is kind of flipping around the place. What happens is, as sometimes as they're going into and out of the anesthetized state, they go through an excited phase where as you're kind of losing the sense of control, kind of start flipping out. Look, it's perfectly normal, but it's kind of why I like this bucket with the soft round edges. And there's nothing really for him to bang into, and particularly given the fact that his vision had been quite bad and just he'd be kind of jumping around the place. I thought this was a good bucket to put him in, and actually turned out quite well. And you can see here, this is sped up um, quite significantly. It's taken him a while, but he is swimming around. He is coming to, and he kind of stops and he gets a bit of composure. And oh, big flip, and he writes himself. And then after that, he just really got so much better so quickly. So at this point, what, I've this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave Krang in this for the next hour or two, just for observation. You can see here now, he's starting to move around really well. He's kind of back to his old self. And you know what? I can tell already he can actually see what's going on much better than he could before. So I'm really happy about this. Now, he's still a little bit excited, as you can see, as is the case normally. You know, it happens a lot when they're coming out of the anesthetized state. So you know what? This is completely normal. He's just kind of getting used to the fact that things are normal again and he's starting to regain control and losing the kind of dizziness and stuff like that. But I'm going to keep him under observation for the next hour or two before I put him back out and into the pond. Now, I just wanted to show you here. This is just after the surgery and you can see the wen is a little bit choppy, but you can clearly see his eye and that chunk that's been removed from above and below. I think it's going to be awesome getting them back out into the pond. He's going to be able to see so much better. Now, this is about two hours later. Krang's back in the pond. And you can see there, looking at us straight ahead. He doesn't have vision above, but he has vision in front of himself. And out to the sides. And that's really important. The vision to the front is really important because he's not going to bang into things if he can see in front of him. And he's also going to be able to find food, which is really important. Now, it's been a little while since crank surgery and, you know, he's been doing so well. I'm really, really happy with how it's gone. I feel like this was a real success as far as these things go. He has, he's no worse to wear for it and he's done really, really well. In fact, he's doing so, so much better now 
than he was even before the surgery. Krang is a super pet. He's a real pet fish. He's f so full of personality. And like that, when I started to do the surgery, I noticed there was a blood clot on the inside of his nose. He was banging into things. He got so hyper excited at food time that I don't think there would have been a quality of life in for this particular fish if the surgery wasn't done. Now I've had other fish that have had issues with their eyes and I have a one-eyed discus. I have fish that are blind in eyes and I've had blind fish and they do just fine but look it depends on the fish and like I said this is not something you just want to go and do. You need to do your research as much of it as possible. And look this is a guide you can see the footage. I hope the information here has been helpful but um, things will vary from fish to fish. The doses rates, you know how long you're going to want to have them under. The amount of when you're going to remove it's all going to be specific to the fish and what you're doing but the important thing is never do this for for you know aesthetic reasons this is not to make them look better this is only to improve their quality of life and that's so so important to just take note of now this is a about a week or two later you can see Brian can see exactly what he's doing now he sees me coming to the pond he's straight over he's getting food and look you can see him here he is when is still stunning he looks fantastic. But look, you can see the wen on all these different types of fish. These are the fish he lives with in my pond. They've all got different wen. Most of them do. The pearl scale doesn't, but pretty much the rest of them do by the telescope. Different shapes and sizes. You feed them good food and they, you know, good clean water. Their wen will grow really healthy. Keep the nitrates down if you're looking for wen to grow. But, you know, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Wen is beautiful. And it's a rare thing like this magnificent beast that you'll actually have an issue with it. This is a really exciting update. Remember the tank behind me at the start of the video? Well, this is actually full of Krang's babies. This is a couple of weeks since the surgery. And you know what? It was only a couple of days later. Krang was in such good form. He um, he put on a bit more weight. He was eating really well. And he was trying to breed with the panda Aranda. So, I thought this is too good an opportunity to miss. He's such an awesome fish. She's an absolute stunner. So I took them and I hand stripped them, which meant I actually removed the eggs and the milk from them so that I could put them into their own bucket and I could do it in a way that was just not traumatic for the fish and make sure that I got what I was looking for. And I got about, there's 109 fish actually in this tank and they are doing so, so well. These guys are only a couple of weeks old. They're doing super. You know, I'm just so happy because... Krang being such a great fish, you know what, I was worried about it at the start, um, doing the, you know, it, it did take a long time for me to decide I was going to go ahead and do the surgery, because like I said at the start, there's always a risk that your fish could die if you do the surgery, so never do it unless you feel that it's going to, you know, really, really change your fish's life, because that's the main thing, it, this wasn't done for any reason other than the fact that Krang is a pet, He's absolutely brilliant. You know, he gives me such joy and he was doing so badly and he was hurting himself. And that's why this was done. And you know what? Now he's, you know, it's great to think that not only is he going to have a better quality of life, now we have all these baby Krangs which are going to be absolutely awesome. I can't wait to see what colors they start putting on. They are, there's a couple of ones that are starting to go purple like some of the other fish from the Panda Aranda. Um, but look, I can't wait to see because he's just the king of when. And um, yeah, I'm just so happy about this. But anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope that some of the stuff was of use to you. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Leave comments below. Like, subscribe. And check me out on Instagram, the joy of aquascaping. Bye!